Hello and welcome back to this video lecture on African societies from 1200 to 1450 CE. The theme of this particular video tutorial is about governance or politics. How did societies in Africa either succeed or fail by using their institutions of politics during this time? Now keep in mind, this is a very difficult time because it's a time of adaptation to the local environment. So, we're going to take a look and see how they were able to do and whether they were successful or whether they failed. I've got my coffee. I'm all ready to go. I hope you are too. So let's start getting ready to take notes. So our story in Africa begins up in the Northwest with a group of people who are nomadic called the Bantu. The Bantu migrate down to Central and Eastern Africa. They did this due to climactic changes after the end of the Ice Age. The migration went on for a long time. It went from 1000 BCE to 1700 CE. The Bantu were significant because they brought with them iron tools. This allowed for things like farming. They also brought with them the Swahili language. Common language allows for organization. The Bantu were the common roots to the central and eastern foundations of African city-states and empires. So let's take a look at a few examples of this. First off are the African port cities. The Bantu formed a number of city-states on the eastern African coastline. These city-states were pretty egalitarian, or what we call equal. This means there really was no significant noble class. Instead, merchants ran the cities. They traded along the Indian Ocean trade route. They traded goods like ivory, quartz, gold, and nuts. Now, typically, according to our stories, this type of society should have collapsed, right? They lacked complexity, but they didn't. Why not? The possible explanation is because they were open to trade. You can get the surplus of goods they needed from the Indian Ocean trade route. Another good example at this time period was Great Zimbabwe. Great Zimbabwe was a source of trade for the African port cities. It was in that eastern part of Africa, but more inland. Great Zimbabwe did develop an empire, and they developed a hierarchy. They helped to supply the African port cities with food and tradable goods from the interior of eastern Africa. So you might start noticing a pattern here of why governments within Africa were able to survive so well. It had to do with trade, and it had to do with the ability to bring in new ideas and new goods. So up in the northeast of Africa, the kingdoms of Ethiopia formed a similarly diverse society. This was due to the connections in the Indian Ocean trade route. They traded diverse goods like rhinoceros tusks, ivory, obsidian, slaves, and tortoise shells. However, there was one big difference in the case of Ethiopia. They developed both trade along the Indian Ocean and trade with European countries due to their location along the Red Sea. This led to a diffusion of ideas as well as goods. Ethiopia, in fact, brought in European Christianity and synthesized or combined this with local beliefs. It led to a unique form of Christianity called Coptic Christianity. Now, how does this relate to politics and governance? Once again, notice how the connection of economics, trade, and politics leads to the ability to bring in a needed surplus. Another example are the Hausa kingdoms. In Western Africa, there were a number of small tribal groups. A man named Sundiata, a really charismatic military leader, arose and he united these tribes together into a single city-state called Mali. Mansa Musa followed him up and he connected Mali to the Middle East. He used a trade route called the Trans-Saharan Trade Route. This was possible due to the use of the camel in huge caravans. Mansa Musa traveled across the Trans-Saharan with 60,000 men. Everywhere he went, he left gold for the local inhabitants, gaining their favor. And once he connected with the Middle East, he brought back not only new goods, he brought back the religion of Islam to Northern Africa. So note once again, the underlying reason for success. Centralization of authority mixed with trade that brought in new goods and new ideas. Northwestern Af Africa became a central hub of trade, including kingdoms like Mali, Ghana, and smaller states called the Hausa states. So Africa is a really good example for testing out what we talked about with the Mesoamerican societies. How did human societies organize themselves and attain success? Remember, the common story of failure for societies was the development of a population that just couldn't be fed anymore by the local supply of agriculture. 
So how did Africa get out of this? Because in some cases they had really hierarchical societies, in some cases they didn't. Here's the big difference. Africa had massive trade routes. Either they traded along the Indian Ocean, or they traded out to the Middle East. This allowed them to bring in new ideas, and even more importantly, it allowed them to bring in goods that would feed their people. Okay, thanks a lot. See you back in class. Oh,